All right. Uh, hard to believe that uh, we finished up day six, so moving fast. Uh, day seven tomorrow. We'll, we'll uh, ramp it up just a little bit more. More tomorrow, we'll, we'll have a similar situation. Uh, today was an all uh, tracking and thud day. Tomorrow we'll get in there a little bit, a little bit alive as well. Uh, but uh, you know, good day, and uh, you know, excited about. You know, what we've seen to this point with, with a lot of these guys, uh, we've had some guys with, you know, either guys you know, not available for practice or injury or whatever. So giving some guys uh, maybe more opportunity than they would have gotten. And I think that's something that ultimately in the long run is going to help our team. But uh, again, off to a good start and uh, looking forward to a great day tomorrow. And it's great to, great to see uh, some of the media out here today for the first time and a long time, so I think that was a, a real positive thing uh, to be able to see some of y'all that had no chance to see in person in a while. Hey, Coach, it's David Hood. Uh, you know, in watching you out there with the wide receivers, obviously Justin Ron stands out, but Dakari and Bo, you, you called them the Collins Towers a couple of weeks ago. Those two guys really, their height, you know, the way that they look stands out. And I see you over there, you know, coaching them. What have you seen out of those two guys so far? Oh man, they're they're uh, very smooth uh, athletes. First of all, very polished guys. You know, they're way ahead from a uh, you know from where Joe came in last year. Joe, which we knew was going to be a very raw, raw kid, but he's making some progress. I'm excited about that. Uh, but these are two guys that that uh, it's obvious that. They have a great feel for the game. Both are physically in a good spot. You know, Kari is, is, is a young know, man. And then Bo has uh, got great size. Not quite as big as Kari, but got great size. But he is, he is silky smooth. And uh, just fundamentally and technically, they get it. Uh, easy to coach. And uh, excited about both of them. I mean, they, they're, they're exactly what you could hope they, that they would be. Uh, especially at this point. So they're, they're way ahead of, of the curve at that position uh, for mid-year guys. So I'm excited about uh, what I've seen so far. Hey, Coach, yeah, it's Trevor Gross from CUTigers.com. Um, I, I saw uh, Justin Ross out there fielding punts. Um, of course, he lost um, both Amari and, and DK um, in, in that uh, category. Um, what, what are your impressions of, of Justin back there? And uh, also, Will Shipley was also fielding punts uh, along with your son, Will. Yeah, Will Brown. Uh, we've got a bunch of guys, uh, you know, that we've been looking at and kind of rotating through. Uh, but, you know, Justin is a, is a natural. You know, he really is. He's, he's uh, something that he really wants to, to work at. And uh, he's, he's great. Boy, he's got great ball skills. And and, uh, and he's got the temperament, you know. Uh, everybody thinks they can do that job, so you've got to go do that job. Uh, that's, a, that's a lonely position. Uh, but uh, Justin's definitely a guy that'll, that'll be in the mix uh, for sure. You know, assuming uh, that everything goes well the rest of the way through now in the season. And uh, Shipley's the guy, you know, and there's going to be two or three of those young guys that we're, uh, you know, evaluating there. But Shipley's definitely a, a dynamic player. You know, he, he, you saw that in high school. I mean, he really does a little bit of everything. But uh, yeah, we got uh, got a good group that we're rolling in there. Yeah, but, uh... Larry Williams here. I think I uh, counted 13, uh, 12 total guys, uh, receivers, tight ends who are 6'3 or taller. Looking toward this season and the future, how different do you think you guys can be just stature wise uh, in, in terms of matchups sort of all across the field? I mean, we were, you know, we were small last year uh, because, again, you know, Ross and Madison and Mendata were. Basically not available uh, for just all the year, you know, spot here or there. But uh, you know, those are three big, big dudes. And uh, you know, EJ's got great size, and of course, he's a true freshman and developing. So you know, it's it's great, you know, to, to have our inspector. Inspector was not available today, uh, you know, as far as our practice uh, reps. And uh, he's another kid that you don't realize how big he is until you get up on him. So we've got a, we've got. Uh, we got, we got some big old tall redwoods out there and got a few little good scrubs too. So we got, we got a good group. Uh, but we're certainly uh, you know, excited about the personnel 
at that position, no doubt about it. Same thing at running back, same thing at back. I'm excited about uh, the guys that we have uh, in those spots. Hey, David, David with ESPN. How did you feel about um, the lack of divisions last year in terms of scheduling? I, it, basically, for you guys, it hasn't mattered at all because you've won your division every year. But um, for example, if you and Notre Dame had been in the same division last year and you lost the regular season game, that would have left Clemson out of a, 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 an ACC championship game and potentially the, the playoff too. And, and getting two teams into the playoff, I'm sure, is good from a financial standpoint for all of you guys. It, it, do you think that that's the way that the league should go, or do you are you in favor of returning back to what the norm had been? I'm in favor of whatever the league tells us. Uh, we're gonna get this team ready to go. I really don't care to be honest with you. Uh, all I care about, you know, that's if that were the case. Hey, it is what it is. I mean, you know, it's got the same problem in a lot of leagues. Uh, we, we just don't play the schedule we got, division, however, however it comes about, and uh, that's really all we're focused on. If there's um, some demand from the TV side on like, hey, that this would be helpful in providing a few extra um, games that we would like to have on TV and might help the TV package. I mean, is it something where any little extra bit of revenue would be worth kind of considering changes to the status quo? We got a new commissioner named Jim Phillips. Uh, those are questions for him. You know, those are questions for old Coach Sweeney here at Clemson. I'm just, I'm just excited to ready to play. My dabbo for commissioner hats are still in full stock. If you want one, I can I send one down to you. Dabo, this is Grace from The Athletic. Um, you said earlier this week that you always knew you'd have a chance to hire CJ, but just weren't sure about the timing. Um, what do you think makes this the right time for him right now? He's ready. And, uh, you know, we talked about it uh, you know, last summer, spring, and, and you know, he was ready to hang them up, you know, and that's the first time that he's been ready to do that and is really ready to commit. Uh, and uh, so, you know, he came in here and was here all last year and uh, made a full commitment to, to really just kind of dive in. And, and uh, so, you know, that's really the biggest thing. Uh, he's he's, he's a, a special guy and uh, just you know, knowing uh, – what he's going to bring to, to our team and, and, and the Clemson and so forth. It's, so, it's exciting, you know, to have the opportunity to, to finally hire him. Uh, you know, we've talked about many times about him joining the staff. Just wasn't sure, you know, for a while which capacity it was going to be. Uh, but he made his decision last year that, that he really wanted to, his, his, the rest of his career to be in coaching. And, he, and uh, so I was excited about that. And again, I uh, had the opportunity to come in and be a a, a grad uh, assistant last year at Brooklyn Masters. And so it's just great timing. And, you know, uh, here we go. Hey, Dabo, this is Anna with Clemson 24 7. Um, I guess maybe one of the benefits of not having an established pecking order right now at corner is just uh, a lot of competition right there, even though you don't have a ton of depth. Has any of the corners maybe separated themselves a little bit? And, and just what are your thoughts right now on Nate Wiggins? Uh, Nate's, Nate's a, a, a really uh, exceptional young talent. He's got a ways to go. He needs a, he needs a, a latter half of spring and a, and a summer in that way room of Coach Batson. Uh, he's got to get stronger. We've got some of these guys, that, you know, young guys coming in that really need that aspect of their game. But he's, he's a natural kid, you know. He's got, he can run. He's got great length. Uh, he's got good instincts for the game. Uh, he's a tough guy. Uh, I like that. And again, he's not a, He's a little light in the pants right now, but, you know, he's, he's an outstanding young prospect, uh, you know, and, and with a lot to learn. But, you know, we do. We got good competition. You know, Malcolm is the guy that, that, that has made great strides for us. And, you know, he's, he's probably going to, you know, he's got a little shoulder uh, deal that we're going to probably have to clean up, you know, after spring uh, uh, break. And he'll probably miss the last part there uh, so that he's ready to go this summer. But, you know, we're excited about him and, and you know, the development of Booth. Uh, Booth's having his best spring of practices uh, that he's had in any spring. Fred Davis is making great strides. I love what I've seen in him. You know, Mario is a, is a savvy veteran guy that, that uh, you know, really is probably more self-aware now than he's been at any point in his career. 
and uh, and I like that. And he gives us some versatility. You know, Mario's a guy that, that can play either corner spot. He's also a guy like Malcolm that can go play that nickel spot that, that we feel good about. You know, we need a couple of guys that can do that. Uh, and uh, so, you know, it's a good group. And Sheridan, uh, Sheridan is, is uh, you know, a, a, a player who's who's developing. You know, he, he had some, some good moments early last year, did not finish the season well. Uh, but he's a talented prospect. Uh, and just going to get better and better. You know, we have a kid named Cody Sensenball around here. That's, that's kind of who he reminds me of. You know, still developing physically. And, and developing his confidence, uh, but he's he's certainly got the tools and the skill to, to, to be a really good player. And again, he's made some plays, and uh, but just didn't finish the season well. And he's eager to, to, to get back out here and compete and, and go have a great junior year, so uh, or even sophomore year, however you want to look at it. Uh, but uh, it's a good group. We got a we got a good group overall that that's competing with Bell Golf. Coach, was uh, Tyson out today? Yeah, Tyson was not available today. Uh, you know, just, just do the protocol. Okay. Dabo, you he's got having, he's doing a great job. You, you mentioned you mentioned sort of not knowing exactly where to classify guys in terms of class and. Um, with the, the essentially the three year of eligibility last year. I know some of the ADs, I guess, talked uh, within the last couple of days. Have you gotten any more clarity about what that might mean beyond 2021? Yeah, we, we, I have not. We've talked about it as, as coaches too. We actually had a big conference call meeting yesterday with, with, uh, with all the coaches. And it's certainly something that, you know, we, we're all hoping that we can get some direction on that. Not, not just us, but all the leagues, but all the coaches. And, uh, there's a lot of discussion. Everybody understands the urgency because it, it impacts, you know, how you can you know, manage your roster, and, and, and not just this year, but but moving forward. And so there's been two or three proposals that they've kicked around. Um, so you know, we'll see where it all lands, but it's definitely something that I think there's some urgency on getting some clarity on. Uh, you know, the main thing is is you know, moving forward. It's not, everybody's going to get their year. That's already been decided for that group that was freshman last year until they cycle through it. The question is, uh, how many years do we get to not have to count them in the 85? Because if you have to count them in the 85, that's, um, that's, that's uh, you know, that, there's going to be a some tough roster management stuff to, to come along with that. So we'll see, you know, how it all, how it all plays out. You know, I'm glad those guys have that option. And, uh, you know, hopefully uh, the commissioners will get together and, and, and figure out the best way to, to manage it from a, a 85 number. You know, is it, is it all the way through? Uh, they don't count until that group strike it through. Is it, is it a two or three year uh, deal? And then hopefully it settles down a little bit. You know, so we just have to see. Those are all good questions. Coach, uh, Jeremiah Trotter looks like a guy that's physically ready to play right now. What are your early impressions of him? Yeah, going to be a great player. Uh, natural prospect. You know, I mean, he's as advertised. Uh, he, he's instinctive to the game. He's, he's a naturally, natural, naturally physical guy. Uh, you know, you say he's linebacker, but, you know, I've been, been around some guys that, that even at linebacker, it wasn't natural for him, but he's He's a very natural guy and uh, you know, seems to game well. And he's got one motor. I love that. Plays full speed. Uh, again, we, we, we signed one guy, but he, he was the guy. And there's a reason. You know, we, we, uh, we, we love uh, his potential and, and what his future looks like. Hey, Coach, David, again. Um, is that going to be a stadium scrimmage tomorrow? And then. What are you you looking for out of the scrimmage? You know that first one of the spring is always big. So, what is it that you want to accomplish? Yeah, well, we're progressing. The, the first big full scrimmage where we just literally let them go play will be next Wednesday. Uh, but you know we've been kind of building up. You know a lot of fundamental work, a lot of just installation and teaching, a lot of competitive, lots of competitive work. Uh, you know whether it be crossover. or or, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, inside drill, scaly team pass, you know, and then we've been creating a lot of situational work in practice. And then we did have a little 
uh, controlled half screen as this past Wednesday, uh, but it was all situational. You know, so you know, just making sure we got some situational work. And then tomorrow we'll, we'll, we'll be kind of half practice and then, and then uh, a half scrimmage type of deal where we'll – am I back? Am I there? Hello? Should be here. Folks, can you all hear coach. Coach? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where you all lost me, but anyway. I thought I killed you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, though, with uh... – with Skowski, I guess, being out of, you know, the live stuff and, and Spectre as well, who are the uh, guys at linebacker you think have, who have the sort of biggest opportunities to, to make an impression this spring? Larry, can you hit us with that question one more time? It cut yeah. out big question. Yeah, yeah I was just going to ask with, uh, with Skowski uh, being limited from, you know, contact stuff and then Spectre being out as well, who are the a couple of the guys who you think have the biggest opportunities at linebacker to sort of, take take a step this spring yeah i mean really all those guys because i mean outside of trotter you know they've all been here they've all had at least a full year under their belt you know uh, you know so but then you got those guys that group that red shirt freshman red shirt sophomore group last year that you know were really you know kane and mcguire vante you know vante showing a, a lot of uh you know strides we just got jake back today uh, he was in green today we just got him back you know trenton is a guy that we've been working you know, inside as well. You know, he's been he's been working the wheel and working working. Uh, you know, the Sam uh, also. So uh, it's it's been good. And you know, of course, Skowski's taking a ton of reps. You know, and he's getting the he's getting all the fudge stuff. And but we're not we're not letting him when we do go live. That's the only thing he's he's not getting right now. But all the other team stuff, he's in there, and, and it's good to to see him directing everything and staying sharp. But uh, I mean, it's a it's a big spring. I mean, I'll, I feel good about. You know, Monte, feel good about Kane, Sergio, Jake, uh, McGuire. I mean, those guys can all play. Uh, so it's very, very competitive uh, right now. And Swint, you know, Swint is as good a player as we got. And we're kind of cross-training him a, a little bit, you know. Uh, he's he's a natural football player. Uh, that, that freshman group last year, uh, Simpson and Swint and Sergio, you know, three really good young prospects and then to go along with those guys that have been around here for a couple of years. And the light is, is, is really, they've gotten some experience. They've had some success, some failure. And, uh, you know, you're starting to see a little bit of a transformation. And, and again, Lamonte, Kane, McGuire, you know, Jake, that, that whole group uh, is uh, you know, really showing some promise. All right, with that, we'll wrap it up. I'll go get on the horn with IT. Thank you all. Yeah, thanks, all right, guys. See you guys.